This video is about projectile motion. So we're talking about motion in X and motion in Y. We've got these equations that we derived slash discovered in the previous chapter. We're in chapter four now in the Walker textbook. These equations, this one I call the definition of acceleration, this one I call the definition of average velocity, this one is just called the classic, and this one is called the tail of two scores. These four equations make up the kinematic equations, and they are good in both the x direction and in the y direction. So let's look at this time at how that happens. I want to talk about x over here in the x direction, they're going to do certain things, each equation will change in a certain way, but what do we know about motion in the x direction? Well, we know the acceleration in the x direction is zero, because which way is gravity pointing? Straight down, right? Straight down. So we know that the acceleration in the x direction is zero, and any time we see an acceleration in these equations, we're going to just set it equal to zero. So let's copy these equations over, and we'll find out how wonderfully simple they become. First of all, the uh, definition of acceleration, when the acceleration is actually zero, just says that velocity in the x direction is equal to initial velocity in the x direction. Okay, so we've got constant acceleration in the x direction. The next thing we want to observe is that displacement in the x direction. Well, this is going to be a, uh, well, it's going to be a rather stupid equation when we're finished. One half initial velocity in the x direction plus the velocity in the x direction times t. But from this previous equation, we see that the initial velocity in the x direction is the velocity in the x direction, so these two are equal. And we can say this is, mm, let's say this is one half the uh, velocity in the x direction plus the velocity in the x direction because those are the same thing. We're going to get two times the velocity in the x direction, so we have one half times two times the velocity in the x direction times time, and this is simply equal to the velocity in the x direction times time. That's what displacement is. Displacement is velocity in the x direction times time. So we've got two equations in the x direction so far. Uh, next we're going to look at the classic. And we'll start that right here. It says delta x, displacement in the x direction, is initial velocity in the x direction times time plus, uh-oh, plus one-half acceleration in the x direction times time squared, but the acceleration in the x direction, sweet, sweet nothing. So we've got, again, the same equation. Purple. Okay, so we're wasting our time with that one also. The x direction is fantastically simple. Let's take this equation over here and see what happens. It says the initial velocity, no, sorry, it says the velocity in the x direction squared is the initial velocity in the x direction squared plus some stuff having to do with acceleration. But we know the acceleration in the x direction is zero. So this is another, oh my goodness, look at this equation right here. This equation right here says that the square of the velocity in the x direction is the square of the initial velocity in the x direction. And that, again, is redundant when viewed with this equation over here. So let's go purple again and say that this sucker is also wasting your time. Next up, the y direction. It's a lot more interesting. <clears throat> well, let's summarize the x direction one more time. The initial velocity in the x direction is the final velocity in the x direction because there's no acceleration in the x direction. Acceleration is what changes velocity, so we don't have to worry about velocity changing because the acceleration is zero in the x direction for something that's in projectile motion. Also, well, this is sort of the definition of average velocity, right? It says that how far you've gone is how fast you're going times time. All right. Let's take all these things over here and look at them in the y direction. In y, we're going to, ooh, we know the acceleration in the y direction is negative baby g. Interesting. And, and for this, I'm assigning 
positive baby g to be 9.81 meters per second squared, the acceleration of gravity on Earth's surface. So we'll be able to plug this stuff in, but I think I'm just gonna write a sub y. So all, all I'm going to do is I'm gonna take these equations and write them with little y's all over the place. So I write v sub y is equal to v naught sub y plus acceleration in the y direction times time in the y direction. What do you think? Should I put a y right there? Then I'll write this equation. It says that how far you've gone in the y direction is one half your initial velocity in the y direction plus your final velocity in the y direction times time. And that's valid. You know, a little y right there, huh? Then I'll take this guy say that displacement in the y direction as a function of initial velocity but not final velocity, we get to use our acceleration this time, from the classic is the initial velocity in the y direction times time, plus one half the acceleration in the y direction times time squared. And then we'll get this final equation over here, tail of two squares, we got the velocity in the y direction square, that's the final velocity, is the initial velocity in the y direction square plus two times the acceleration in the y direction times delta y. This is the hardest one for me to remember. This one right here that's got the uh, delta y. You never know if you're gonna put a delta y there or a delta t, and we'll talk in another video about how you can know what to do right there. So these are the four kinematic equations in the y direction, and there are actually only two kinematic equations that you need in the x direction. That's that.